What is up guys, Joel, Black Death Thrash Doom, and it is time to continue showing my black metal collection, uh, my CDs, and sorry there's been a little bit of a lull with material output on this channel, but it hasn't just been this channel, actually my gaming channel has kind of suffered from me not having motivation to put things out, but here we are, we're going to get to the uh, next 25 CDs in my black metal collection alphabetically. Now here's the thing, this is a weird one. First of all, because there's only... most of this is just four bands. There are a few other bands sprinkled in here, but it just so happens that these four bands are in the B's, and I have quite a few CDs from all of them, and so this is <laughs> mostly four bands, but there are other ones sprinkled in between as well. Also, uh, two of the bands in here, or even more, are definitely more on the side of Black Death, but as I have talked about before in previous episodes, Pretty much anything that is in the realm of black death metal is going to be put in my black metal collection just for ease of finding things. So, for instance, God Dethroned, uh, you know, some people would think, you know, that's totally melodic like black death. Uh, so which do you have it in, death metal or black metal? Well, I just tend to put all black death metal in my black metal collection. So a couple of you guys are going to be like, oh, that band is definitely more death metal, or that band's definitely uh, black death. That that may be true in some instances, but uh, it's still going to go in that collection. I guess you can bitch if you want, but we're going to start things off with exactly, exactly one of those bands. Um, we're going to start off with Behemoth. Please like, comment, subscribe. That would be amazing. Uh, Behemoth from the Pagan Vastlands. Believe it or not, this is actually one of my rarest CDs. This is a super old, I believe, demo, actually. It's not an album. But yeah, it's uh, album length, pretty much. Production's really rough. But it's kind of a cool CD. It's got these really cool parts with uh, acoustic guitars strumming and then black metal tremolo riffs, you know, going at the same time. And it's really cool. It's just so different from the Behemoth that we know today. You know, Behemoth these days definitely is Black Death. Uh, I think it still retains some black metal elements for sure these days, but, uh, you know, it's definitely way more on the death metal side as well. But yeah, Behemoth from the Pagan Vastlands. If you've never heard this before, you might be surprised. It's kind of an unusual one. Moving on, we've got we've got quite a few Behemoth CDs. We've got Grom. Now this is when they're still in their black metal phase, and it's decent black metal. It's nothing to scream about. I do like this album, and I do like the Sventivith album, Storming the Baltic. It's pretty good. Uh, I don't know what's up with this weird shiny sticker. Can't even tell what the hell it says, but yeah, uh, this is just a repress. But yeah, it's not a bad CD. Uh, fast black metal with a nice icy atmosphere. Pretty good stuff. Behemoth was definitely really good back in the day. I mean, and arguably they're still good now. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite, unpopular opinion, this is one of my favorite Behemoth albums. Uh, this is the first one that I ever got. This is right When this came out, I found this right away. And yeah, this is the first one I ever got. And then I got that Pagan Vastland soon after that. Believe it or not, I got that Pagan Vastlands for like $5 at a used music shop. But yeah, Behemoth Satanica, they're definitely getting more into their death metal death metal parts right here, or black death right here. Uh, Machine-like drumming, but it's actually a real drummer. I thought for the longest time that this was not a real drummer, because his name on this is something like, has like dot something on it. I don't remember. There was some reason I thought that this wasn't a real drummer. And then I saw uh, an article talking about this album, and yeah, it, it was indeed a real drummer. This is, you know, pretty early on when I was listening to uh, black metal. This is in the very early 2000s. Whenever this came out, yeah, 2000, that's when I got this. This is my original copy. So that was a long time ago. Uh, we've got Behemoth Zoski Cultus. This is honestly not one of my favorites. Uh, it is definitely in that same Black Death vein and scathing, and it does have some decent songs on here for sure, but I don't know, there's just something about this album that I'm like, meh, it's alright. It's not bad. I need to listen to it again, honestly. It has been probably years since I've heard this, so maybe my opinion's changed on it. What do you guys think about Behemoth? Which ones are your favorites? Which ones do you absolutely despise? Uh, I cannot believe I have so much Behemoth. I, I don't know how that happened. Well, one thing is is I got a lot of these cheap. 
I remember there was a dude that came into Sam Goody. Yes, we still have a Sam Goody. And he turned in a bunch of metal CDs. And this is when they had that, like, buy two, get one free. And their prices were ridiculously low. So I ended up buying a bunch of behemoths. And um, that's actually where I got a couple of my incantations as well and a few other CDs. But, yeah, Behemoth Demigod. I definitely like this one more than Zoskia Cultus. But it's just more of the same. Black Death, sca scathing vocals, you know, extremely fast drumming, lots of atmosphere. Pretty good. Uh, the Apostasy, I honestly don't have much to say about this because I have not heard this one much, so yeah, there you go. I assume it's more of the same. Uh, Evangelion was pretty good. I like this one. This is the last one that I really was like, alright, this fucking kicks ass. This is pretty good. It's got some great songs on it. I like this Digipack, and it comes with, like, DVD of something. Maybe even a concert, actually. I'm not sure. It includes DVD, no, making of Evangelion. And the last behemoth I have... Jesus Christ, I have a lot of these. Uh, this is, what, the Satanist? Yeah. Uh, cool digipack. I like it. Gonna be honest. I don't even remember what this sounds like. Like, I've heard it, like, once, and I just don't... I've lost interest in Behemoth. I listen to so much other stuff. I got this again because it was super cheap. Uh, I don't even know why, because when I got this, this was still fairly new, but I got it for super cheap, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly just kind of fell off the Behemoth bandwagon for a while there, but I should go back and listen to these, especially this one in Zoski Occultus, and probably the Apostasy as well. As you can see, I own a lot of Behemoth, but I just, I'm not a super fan or anything like that, I just happen to get a lot of it, um... I like this band a lot, and a lot of people are going to say, hey, that's Black Death too, and maybe that belongs in your death metal collection, buddy. But I've always thought Belphegor had enough black metal in them that they were more in the black metal than death metal. And either way, again, Black Death is just going to end up in my black metal collection for ease of finding shit. Because I'm not going to be like, fuck, where did I put Behemoth? Did I put that in black metal, or did I put that in death metal? Shit, where did I put God to Throne? Shit, where did I put... Belphegor. Anyways, Belphegor, uh, we've got Goat Reich Flesh Colt. This is actually a great CD. This is a really good one. Uh, barbaric, brutal, Black Death, uh, maybe even leaning more on the side of death metal, but fucking scathing definitely has a crazy atmosphere that is not present in most death metal, so yeah, Belphegor. Great shit. I really like that album. Let me move these CDs over a little bit so I have room. Okay, and then we've got another Belphegor. Bondage Goat Zombie. This one's really more of the same. These two albums honestly kind of remind me of each other. It's it's really just the same stuff. It's, you know, vicious, uh, dark, brutal. Yeah, pretty good shit. This one's got a DVD. It's got some video clips and some other stuff. But yeah, pretty cool. I really like this album. It's, it's a fun one to listen to, especially in the car. Brutal. Yeah, more Belphegor. Uh, Walpugers writes Hexalon. This is a pretty cool one. Lots of atmosphere on this one. This one, in my opinion, has a lot more black metal to it. It's definitely, um, I mean, you can even see from the cover, it just, and everything about it, this one was a little bit more, uh, atmosphere and darkness, despite being still a vicious, brutal attack. But yeah, Belphegor, uh, if you like, if you like darkness mixed in with your black death, which of course, I mean, makes sense, but plenty of darkness, drenched in darkness and violence. Yeah, this is a good album for that. I, I really enjoy that album. And I really enjoy this one as well, Blood Magic Necromance. This one's just got some catchier songs and some, uh, a, a really gross cover. <laughs> I, I just, I, I kind of hate the cover, but I got this one pretty cheap. And uh, yeah, this one's pretty good too. It's got a pretty dark atmosphere as well. And, yeah, it's more of the same. I mean, it's fucking Belphegor. You know what to expect with Belphegor, and if you don't, you know, you can pretty much listen to any album and you'll get a good idea. Uh, this is a fantastic album. We've got Black Braid with their first album. Uh, it's labeled One, I believe. I, you know, I argued this on my top ten list. This made it on my top ten list, and I wasn't sure if it was I or if it was Roman numeral One. But I, I assume it's Roman numeral One. But, yeah, um, Black Braid, one-man band. From uh, the Adirondacks, right? New York? Yeah, but anyways, uh, Native American-inspired black metal, speedy, awesome, great atmosphere. Just absolutely fantastic atmosphere. I'm glad that guy's getting some attention for his work. Next up, we've got Blaze of Perdition, Near Death Revelations, one of my favorite album covers of all time. I mean, look at that piece of art. I have to, I have to hold everything kind of at a weird angle because I get glare from the uh, 
you know, from the light on the camera, or because it's bright outside right now and I'm doing this right in front of a window, this is the best spot, you know, uh, either way I've got glare there or I've got glare here, so I'm just kind of holding things kind of to the side, but yeah. Uh, Near Death Revelations, uh, Blaze of Perdition, if you don't know this band, they're absolutely super, super fucking dark. They're, I mean, almost depressive black metal, but they're a little too intricate and a little too fast to be that, but they do have a lot of variety as well, and great songwriting, and just really, really goddamn dark. Um, yeah, I highly recommend that album. Next, we move on to a symphonic black metal band that, God, I swear nobody talks about, Bloodthorn, In the Shadow of Your Black Wings, uh, this album's not that great. It's it's okay. I believe these guys are from Norway, and it's very castle-y, very medieval, and, you know, slaying dragons and shit like that. Very symphonic. I really love the art on this. But this is a weird CD. Like, the way it folds out, it's like there's too much room right here. It's almost like there was supposed to be something in between. And then this booklet makes it look like... This is from another album called Breeding the Evil Inside, but it's not. This is just a weird booklet that just kind of sits in here, and it's just a weird, weird presentation, but I really enjoy... I mean, look at that fucking... Look at that art. That is so amazing. I love the CD, too, but that art reminds me of something that you'd see on a summoning album. But yeah, super fucking cool. But yeah, just a strange layout, strange presentation, and uh, kind of a strange album. Nothing to scream about, nothing to write home about. Bloodthorn in the shadow of your black wings. If you need something new, well, really old, symphonic black metal-wise, check that out. But honestly, check this out. Bloodthorn, Onwards into Battle. Look, check out that Final Fantasy-esque art. It is just beautiful. And the music inside is also kind of beautiful. Symphonic black metal, uh, mid-paced sometimes even slow paced and then sometimes speedy it's kind of all over the place heavy use on synths on synths and uh there's female vocals as well and it's pretty beautiful i actually really enjoy this album and i don't hear anybody talking about it but yeah bloodwards on in onwards into battle on season of mist this is really good 1999 long forgotten man long long forgotten what it what is old as shit but not long forgotten we've got blue dots nord with the Ultima Thule album. I just got this recently. Uh, I got this at Amoeba Music in San Francisco. It's just a repress, but I was really stoked to find this because, you know, this is not something I would really be able to find an original copy of. And I'm not very familiar with this album. This is one of the Blue Dots Nords. It's just kind of... I never really listened to this old, old, old one. And, man, I love the way it looks. Check out that CD. Just the color of the logo is beautiful. Uh, the camera almost doesn't do it justice, but geez, it's just such a beautiful digipack. And yeah, pretty crazy weird black metal that's definitely dark as hell, very atmospheric. And then uh, this is definitely one of my rarer CDs as well. We've got an original pressing of Blue Dots Nord, Fathers of the Icy Age, and this is a really, really badass album. This is honestly one of my favorite Blue Dots Nords. The Memoria Vetusta albums are some of my favorite Blue Dots Nord material. And again, this is an old, old pressing. I believe it's the very first pressing in Pure Creation Records right there. And yeah, I got this used at a record shop locally and was very stoked to find it. Very, very stoked to find it. This is a lot more atmospheric, majestic, and epic than something like this or like the work which transforms God or even some of the trippier albums. This shit is majestic and atmospheric and beautiful in the most dangerous dark way possible. And then we've got the follow-up to that. We've got Blue Dots Nord's Memoria Vestusta 2, Dialogue with the Stars. Fucking shit. This actually might be my favorite Blue Dots Nord album. Just majestic, spacey, cosmic black metal on such a epic level, it's hard to describe. Fast, speedy, twinkling riffs. You've got tons of atmosphere and just amazing drumming and just everything about this album is amazing. So much atmosphere. This is one of the best atmospheric black metal albums ever made in my opinion and it's so good. I still need the follow-up. I need the third part of those. Uh, but the last Blue Dots Nord album I own, I also got from Amoeba Music. We got Blue Dots Nord's newest Disharmonium, Undreamable Abysses, and goddamn the packaging is fucking amazing on this. You know when I say I hate Digipacks, 
it sucks because sometimes the art just looks so good on digipacks like check out the slip cover and you get the original art in there and it's just fucking gorgeous I mean, at least this one has the actual plastic tray and you're not sliding it out of some cardboard sleeve. But if you haven't heard this, this is the ultimate in darkness. Just absolute fucking crushing wall of noise and just black cosmic atmosphere. Sounds like something that came straight from Cthulhu's asshole. Blue Dos Nord's Disharmonium Undreamable Abysses is one of the greatest albums that's come out in the most recent few years in my opinion let's move on to some Borknagar and I know Borknagar is a little bit more on the Viking leaning side but again my black metal collection has all the Viking stuff and it's got all the like depressive black metal, black death, uh, you know there's a lot of stuff in my black metal collection I would call it my black and dark collection um, but yeah, Borknagar especially back then, they have plenty plenty of black metal influence in there and this is a repressing I'm pretty damn sure but this is their self-titled album great fucking viking black metal kind of a thin production but it serves it well and man I love that album cover what a that's one of the most iconic album covers of all time in my opinion my favorite Borknagar of all time the olden domain oh my god what do I have to say about this it's just I the majestic epicness of this the acoustic mixed with the viking mixed with the black metal the vocals are all over the place and wacky and just fucking great i can see why people cannot get into this um because you know the vocals are strange they are unusual but my god they're perfect they're fucking perfect this album has everything this is one of literally one of my favorite albums of all time uh this is what i tend to tune my stereo to because I know how much this album I know what this album sounds like in and out so much and what it's supposed to sound like that if I feel like something's wrong with my stereo I'll put in Borknagar Olden Domain because from there I can kind of tune it to where I like it <laughs> it sounds stupid uh, my water damaged uh, quintessence album yeah, this is a great album, though it's not really my favorite Borknagar. This one's definitely more on the progressive side. And, uh, yeah, it's actually really good, though. I, I really like Colossus. What a great song. And this has Vortex, ICS Vortex on vocals, doing a fucking phenomenal job on vocals. And, yeah, this is a great album. I really like the Archaic Course also. I need that one. But, uh, yeah, this one seems like... I feel like the Archaic Course and this one almost seem like they go together. They remind me of each other for sure. And the last Borknagar album that I have, I've got Empiricism, and I fucking love this album. This actually might be my second favorite Borknagar album, which I know is an unpopular opinion, but I really like the vocal style of Ventresorg on this album, which is funny because I'm really not that huge of a fan of Ventresorg and his vocals normally, but this album in particular for some reason just does it for me. The songs are fucking phenomenal. From the genuine pulse all the way down to View of Everlast, this album is packed with gems, amazing songs. If you've never heard this album and you're okay with clean vocals, man, do yourself a favor and check out Empiricism. This is the unsung hero of the Bork Nagar uh, collection. And the last CD I have for you, number 25, is kind of a weird one <laughs> because I'm not really into these guys and I know these guys kind of get a lot of shit so it's kind of a weird one to end on but we're going to show it anyways and I saw these guys live and believe it or not they were really fun live and that's Carrick Angren where the corpses sink forever and uh, yeah, Symphonic Black Metal, if you like Cradle of Filth you probably like Carrick Angren and it's catchy and it's well composed and it's not bad I'm not really into these guys a whole ton not really into symphonic black metal that much anymore. Uh, I mean, sometimes. It kind of depends on my mood. But these guys are one of those bands that I never really think to put on. But I bought this CD at the show. Thought it was cool. I think I bought it at the show. But thought it was, you know, pretty cool. And they definitely had a great performance. So there you go. 25 black metal CDs or uh, Black Death and a little bit of Viking thrown in there as well. So if you had fun with the video, please give a like. That would be amazing. And leave a comment down below. Which was your favorite CD? And what have you guys picked up recently? Anything cool? What have you been listening to? Leave a comment down below. Please like. Please subscribe. That's the best way you can support this channel. Thank you very much for watching. You guys rule. Keep it metal.